Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome to another vintage holo card hunting video. This time we are in Ikebukuro. It's Saturday, there's a lot of people out and about. It's gonna be exciting. I don't know this place quite as well as some of the other places in Tokyo, but uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna check out some card stores and hopefully we can find some of the hollows we are still looking for. Okay, our first stop is Big Magic in this building right next to this seafood restaurant down there, sixth floor. Take the elevator up. Uh, they've had some good stuff in the past. Uh, well, let's check it out. All right, Ibex here from the future doing some voiceover. It was very hard to film in the store. So many people inside. So I just took some clips, some screenshots sometimes. But yeah, Big Magic, you can see lots of yellow sticker cards, a lot of damage cards. They had a bunch of PSA stuff too. Uh, they had a Decent amount of vintage hollows, not too many. Uh, they were pretty much all yellow stickered and a little expensive. Uh, you can see like 998 yen was like the lowest they went for the cards. I inspected the Lugia for 2000 yen. Seemed cheap, but it was just completely beat up. But I almost bought it because it was like, you know, it's a Lugia. <laughs> you know, for like 12, 13 bucks. I don't know, but I didn't end up getting it. Uh, yeah, we see some more yellow sticker cards. A few white stickers here and there in between. And you can see like some of the more expensive stuff, like the really expensive stuff, they just have like printouts, like pictures, like samples. They don't actually have the slabs out in the front. A lot of robberies recently, so stores are a little more careful these days. Some cool seal promos here, a little on the pricey side, but not too bad. You can see a Neo Destiny pack there, graded in the back, it's pretty cool. They had some seal stuff, uh, Dream League, 75,000 yen, not terrible, cool. Uh, sleeves as well, tons of different sleeves. And then uh, some booster packs, like unweight black and white booster packs straight from the box, not terrible. All right, over there we can see our next stop, sixth floor yellow submarine. Uh, I hardly ever buy from them, but they're just one of those places that's always worth checking out. So they didn't have any vintage at all. I was a little disappointed, they only had modern, but I figured, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna film some of it anyways, just in case. You want to see some of the prices. I'm not super up to date with modern prices, so I don't know if these are like good or bad. I know I saw some of these cards cheaper in other places, but they don't look terrible. Uh, they have some expensive ones too, like the Iona there, 74,000 yen. I don't know, is that good? I'm not sure. There's the Miriam on the right there, 30,000 yen. These were all more, more expensive not too long ago, so eh, who knows. Uh, they had the newest set pre-order, four boxes per person pre-order, pretty cool to see. And very interestingly, look at that, discount, Shiny Treasure EX, a whole case you can get, 23% off, booster box 4,400 yen, 20% off for a booster box. Wild Forest as well there on sale on the left, pretty awesome to see this stuff uh, for sale. Our next stop is Dragon Star Ikebukuro. It's in this building that has the Jonathans and the Family Mart. The entrance is a bit hard to find because it does not look like a store entrance, but it's that one just over there. So hopefully we can find some carts in here. Dragon Star, cool store, uh, very, very little vintage. So I filmed some other stuff, took some screenshots. You see lots of Master Balls here. I figured, hey, people might be interested in Master Ball prices. There you go, there they are. Uh, they seem a little high on some of them, I feel like compared to what like PSA 9s and 10s go for. See some other cards, Moonbrium in the back, always cool to see. Lots of uh, damage cards too, that are a little cheaper, modern ones. And then some beautiful Koro Koro Muse, always great to see. You know, one of the nice things about Ikebukuro is that the Pokemon Center, Sunshine City, is very close. It's just like around the corner down the road to the left there. Um, so it's, it's worth it to come here, check out the card stores and then go to the Pokemon Center. I'm not gonna go there today. There is no chance in the world that I'm going there on a Saturday afternoon. But I might make some more videos in the future where I just go to all the different Pokemon Centers in Tokyo potentially. Not a lot of success so far in terms of finding vintage hollows, um, but now we're gonna go to a place where I know they have tons of them. And that's, you see right there, fifth floor cart secret. They have a ton of vintage stuff, um, modern too. Uh, conditions usually not good, prices a little high. It's a bit of a touristy place, so they tend to mark up the prices a little bit, but uh, hopefully we can find something because so far, 
It's not been so good. You know, Card Secret is like a museum. Look at this. Look at all this stuff. They have so much cool seal stuff on display. Um, it's worth visiting just to have a look. But everything is too expensive. Like Dream League is 20,000 yen more than it was in Big Magic that we saw earlier. Um, <clears throat> they're also one of the few stores that didn't have the newest sets on sale, like discounted, like Shiny Chihiro EX. They were still selling them at MSRP, which is not terrible, but you know, they're more expensive than other stores. Uh, they had some cool packs too. These as well, a little more expensive than market price, but not terrible. <laughs> Just a Spion Gold Star, no big deal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, tons of cards, you know, vintage, mid-era, modern, you know, here's some primes. They have so much of it. Uh, black and white full arts, always nice to see. And I only filmed a little bit. Here we got some no rarity. They had a lot of that too. Very cool to see. Charizard, no rarity. Very beat up, but always fantastic to see. And, well, here you go. Tons of vintage cards. You know, non-hollows, hollows, promos. Sard was sold out. Uh, they had a lot of cards I needed for the binder, so I actually inspected quite a few of the cards in Card Secret. There's a Shining Celebi up there. Uh, also quite interesting to see sometimes just the sheer amount that they have. Uh, you'll see here in a, a second just uh, like a stack, stacks of cards coming up. Yeah, look at how many Clefables there and Pidgeots. <laughs> I'm sure they have more in the back. Uh, same with the Jungle Wigglytuff there on the side. So many of them. Uh, yeah, Versa series, e-reader stuff, you name it, they had it. Like I said, I inspected quite a few of the cards in here and everything was just very expensive for the condition, especially compared to Akihabara. Uh, McDonald's Jarmander, nice card. A Scramble, Venusaur right there. And the Play Promo Rayquaza in the middle, that's a sick card. Definitely one I want to get someday. Some X and Y stuff. Nothing too, too crazy here. A little bit of Sun and Moon. Trade Please Promo 2016 reprint. There's a 25th anniversary Sard. And just some more beautiful... I just wanted to film it here. Like, there's so many cool cards. <laughs> Gift Box Mew. Uh, right there in the back, the Window Mew promo. Uh, Poké Park Lugia. Gengar EX. My god. Lots of cool Delta species like the Ninetales or these these beautiful cards right here. Very expensive, though. And then, uh, you know, Team Rocket Returns, the birds. I think they're from a deck in Japanese. They also had a separate display case just for Pikachu cards. And so you can see like a lot of the different base set variants, some of the older promos, uh, that uh, level X, Pikachu M level X, I think it is. Uh, beautiful cards. They have cheap, cheap ones, expensive ones. You can see <laughs> coming up down there in the bottom left, you see it in just a second. Some of the ponchos. Uh, yeah, lots of different languages too. You see some different languages up there and then some world's promos in different languages. They had the same for evolutions, So a whole display case just for evolutions. Uh, here too, lots of different languages. Card Secret is really a great place if you want to go and find cards in another language. Like not just Japanese English, like the Indonesian, German, Spanish, whatever, right? You name it, Thai. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, beautiful cards right here. Great selection. But again, everything is just marked up and a lot more expensive than the stores around. Um, so I... Never really buy anything here, but let's just go and have a look. Hoppip, for example, four times market price right there, 30,000 yen, pretty crazy, yeah. That was card secret. We picked up one card, but probably not what you expected. Stay tuned to find out. Here on the second floor is uh, Fuku Fuku Torekai and Ike Kukuro. This is probably the smallest card shop ever. It's actually crazy how small it is. But yeah, let's check it out. All right, so I just have a couple clips in here. Very, they like three display cases, tiny store, but lots of cool PSA graded cards. And they also had a ton of yellow sticker damaged uh, older cards that Lugia inspected for 10,000 yen. Wasn't quite good enough. They had some cleaner ones, but very expensive. All righty, heading back to Ikebukuro station to go home. We didn't find much today, but we're not going home empty handed. So stay tuned to find out what we bought. Back home with the binder. So, before I talk about what I bought today, I wanted to briefly show you these cards and explain them real quick. Now, these are all vintage hollows that I am missing in the Binder collection. For example, we got the base set Hitmonchan, needs to go right there. Uh, these are all cards I've had in my collection for a while, uh, but they were like in a different place. So, for example, the Ericus Venusaur I had in a card saver because it's a card I wanted to eventually get graded. These cards right here in top loaders and team bags I've had for a few years and are all cards I wanted to maybe get graded one day. And then 
These cards I picked up more recently. Uh, for example, I think these two cards were in my summer pickups video, and these are cards I bought as inventory to sell raw. And what I decided to do is instead of doing what I had intended, you know, so instead of grading these cards or selling these cards, I'll just put them in the binder because I'm missing them and I can add a bunch of cards to the binder. It's going to save me a whole lot of money. And although they weren't in the binder when I started this challenge, uh, they were in my collection. So I think it still counts. <laughs> um, so yeah, just wanted to explain this though, in case you are wondering why you might see or why you will see some more hollows in this binder that I didn't pick up in a video in a card shop. But yeah, uh, wanna do this uh, with these cards. And I'm actually really excited because like, again, all of these cards right here, you know, the to be graded and to maybe be graded are actually all really, really clean cards. So that's nice to be able to add them to the binder. Okay, so what did I buy? First, Yellow Submarine. I picked up two boxes of shiny treasure EX, not related to the challenge at all, of course, but I just, I, I couldn't pass it up. I just put it right here. Here's the receipt, 8,800 yen for two boxes, so 4,400 a piece. Comes out to about $28 per booster box. That is such, it's such a good price, I couldn't pass it up. So adding these to my seal collection. And you know, it reminded me of this right here. It reminded me of when I bought VMAX Climax for 4,900 yen in card stores. Um, this is of course also below MSRP, not as low as these. But uh, yeah, I just had the same kind of vibe. Seeing a cool set below MSRP, couldn't pass it up. You know, I think Shiny Treasure EX will take a lot longer to appreciate in value than VMAX Climax did. Uh, but still, $28 a booster box? Are you kidding me? Like, it's such a no-brainer in my opinion. So pick these up. Uh, next, uh, the card from Card Secret that I mentioned might surprise you. And I said that because it is... Dun -da -da -da, a Shadowless Metapod. <laughs> Again, not related to the challenge, but I picked this up for a reason. But before I explain real quick the condition, uh, 380 yen... And this card is like really clean. Like this card looks pack fresh. There's a bit of whitening on the side. You can see like, uh, but that could with shadowless, like that could be pack fresh. But even so, like even if it isn't like pack fresh condition necessarily, uh, 380 yen is actually a really good price. Like I checked eBay comps. So that's cool. Uh, but I bought it for a reason. I needed it for a video that I'm working on right now, and the video is related, a little teaser for you, it's related to this card right here, the Shadowless Pikachu. I wanna make a video about this card because this is not a normal Shadowless Pikachu, and I will, or want to explain that in a video, and I needed a card for comparison. Found the Metapod, it's kinda cool too because my little uh, plushy mascot that in some of the videos is a Metapod, so that was kinda nice. Uh, yeah, bought this in Card Secret. It was funny. I didn't find any vintage hollows worth picking up in Card Secret, but the one card that was worth picking up was a, an English card, a Shadowless Metapod. Kind of weird, kind of funny. And that's it. That's all I bought today. No vintage hollows, unfortunately, but that's how it goes sometimes, you know. Um, more often than not, I come home from card shops empty-handed, uh, you know, with the cards I picked up recently. I was willing to pay a bit of a premium here because it completed a jungle set. I was willing to pay a bit of a premium here because it's a clean Mew, right? But man, I I couldn't find any cards that were worth picking up. Everything was just too expensive for the condition. And although I love places like Card Secret, like I said, it's like a museum. It's worth going just to have a look. Their prices were just not good. Like we're talking like for the cards in their conditions, double, triple of what you can find in other stores. I'll go back to Ikipokoro. There are a ton of stores I didn't check out. So I'm sure we'll find some cards in the future. But yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Unfortunately, came home empty-handed. Well, not empty-handed. Found some other really cool stuff, of course. Um, but just nothing for the binder. But I still get to add some cards to the binder. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed coming along on a journey, going to the different card stores, even though we didn't find anything, I think it's still always fun to see what cards they have and what kind of prices they they have and what kind of sealed stuff they have. But uh, hopefully we are more successful in the future. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. And if you haven't subscribed, click that button to not miss the next video. Thank you for that too. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.